Hey everyone, welcome to Atlas Gaming. I release content every day, and we are continuing our playthrough of Subnautica, my favorite game of all time. No joke. No joke. It is. It's my favorite game of all time, even though I haven't beaten it yet. That's just because I got caught up just playing the game. Anyway, enough of that. So, we are on the dry land still. We're going to go over there to the mothership, but I was just kind of up here looking around, and so a lot of times in games, when you look straight on at an object, that's how the game wants you to see it, right? But then a lot of times, especially like in the distance rendering, what I've noticed in my experience of games is a lot of times you can kind of go like this. So while I'm looking, see right here, see the, the home base beacon and like the, the, the life pod, whatever signifier on the screen. Okay, so keep your eyes over there. So if we turn the screens, ooh, what's that? What is it? What's being drawn over there by the game when we turn our screen off to the side? Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. It's dry land over there. But the thing that caught my eye, the reason I did that um, and looked over there was because there was like some pretty dense fog right there. And in this game, they like to hide the land with fog for some reason. So um, that that's why I did that. Kind of cool, though. But we're going to go over to the mothership in this video. And I, I want the prawn suit. I want the prawn suit so badly, I'm going to figure out how to do it. And this is how badly I want it. If you've been following my channel, um, then then you would know I do not like to go online and read about... Let's let's do this. I don't like to go online and read about um, games, because to me, that's not playing the game. I like to experience it for myself, even though sometimes it totally sucks. Like the elusive prawn suit, like I just... Oh, my... I spent so much time trying to get it in my personal playthrough when I did not record um, and, I, and I was unsuccessful. And so I want the prawn suit so badly that if, if we can't find it right here, I'm going to go online and look it up, even though I don't like to. It's going to take a minute, so please hold. So, oh, shh. Okay, I didn't, I didn't plan that. <laughs> I was gonna actually like look back at that guy and talk for a second about it. Like one, one of my favorite parts about this game that um, anybody watching who isn't playing themselves won't get to experience because I pause whenever I travel. Okay, that that was getting really jumbled and all the thoughts were getting out of order. So let me start over. One thing I love about this game is is the the world, right? And like you experience the world through observation when you're traveling to point A to point B a lot of times, and. That's something that anyone who's just watching this and not hasn't played or won't play doesn't really get to experience because I usually pause when I'm doing like long distance traveling just for the interest of uh, video length. But what's that down there? Is that I, I don't know what it is, even though I played this game before I like, you know, the world is so big and there are so many opportunities for exploring that I haven't been down there. I don't know what it is. What I'm looking for here is... Where it, where'd it go? The proposed Degasi habitat. Oh, hey, guy. They're benign, except if you run into them, they do damage. Huh. Where did it go? Are you can't. Oh, there it is. Jeez. That threw me for a loop. Okay, so we're, we're going to chase squirrels here for a minute. Looking at power and um, whole integrity of this thing in the bottom right. So we're about halfway down on power. 70% health isn't ideal. Okay, so this does not appear to be a way to get in there. Ooh, what's this? And we're running a little bit low on water. We're at like half. We have the one marble melon still, but I want to keep that. I want to plant it in our base. All kinds of resources here. I'm not interested in those right now. I don't want to spend too much time hoarding in this game. Like, it's it's easy to lose control. Ooh. Is this? And I'm already turned around. Good thing we're in a submersible. We don't have to worry about air right now. So we can get lost. No, this isn't going to be quick or convenient. So we're going to ab abort. <laughs> abort mission. Abort the squirrels. Because um, I was going to go down there and... Ooh. That was a big transition, wasn't it? Look at this. So we're down here. You look up and it's like dark. Let's take two. Kind of cool. I like the way that like there is an actual transition. It's not just like a glitchy lighting effect. Um, they they have like an um, it's like an animation, right? But it's something there and the transition like those lighting modes. We've got a message. 
Let's go back real quick. We're gonna check that message and then um, get some water. Kind of prepare for our like our trek. So, okay, I guess I didn't really talk about this. Um, when we go, we're gonna look for the prawn suit, right? Let's check this out real fast. The prawn suit, blueprint. That's what we're looking for. Looking for blueprints. The prawn suit takes 20, 20 scans. It's a lot. And so I happen to know um, by having having played this before and re reading all the data bank entries, I happen to know that there's a clue in the data bank. I mean, it's talking about like a chest, and so or it's kind of like a loot chest is what the game kind of like introduces it as. But it's a it says like something in the description. Hey, this chest is in like the officers' quarters adjacent to the prawn bay, something like that. So it kind of leads me to believe that there's a prawn bay on there with probably a bunch of prawn parts that we can scan reverse engineer a blueprint for and then build one for ourselves so that's that's our operating premise for um for finding it for for our journey here so we're gonna be going over there to the mothership and um hopefully trekking around and i've tried it before i was unsuccessful like i mentioned so anyway we're already back at um this is the radio check our message and i think we have water left i don't know yeah we do cool so boop and 30 water each good enough rotten small marble melon i don't think it's big of a deal if it's rotten i don't think it matters um we do want to empty out the inventory and stuff so let's check this message high priority automated message from aurora live pod 13 coordinates attached live pod is carrying high priority passenger yoki kasa i said kasa why do i have to record this anyway send immediate burial detail <laughs> send immediate burial detail is he because he's probably dead all right well let's let's see what do we hang on a second please hold Okay, we are just about there. So I got got some space cleared out in the old inventory. Got uh, max food and water, so we should be good for a while. Then got one bottle of water to bring with us, just because. Okay, so this is the mothership. This is um, where it impacted like this kind of like the only shallow place on the whole world. I think impacted this, kicked up. Um, well, didn't kick it up, but it like it made this. It moved a lot of earth around, we'll put it that way. And I don't know, if, do you call it earth if it's not on earth? Just like the dirt and like the soil material? I don't know. So, I'm not sure how to get in here. We're going to figure it out, though. The water is kind of tinged like this orange color, and I'm pretty sure that's from the radiation. You can see it's just like dirty and it's murky. So, this is the... Platform readings in this region are sparse. The Aurora's radioactive fallout will have devastating effects on the alien ecosystem if not contained within the next 24 hours. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to contain like, a nuclear reactor worth of... Oh, oh God. <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, that, that scared me. Startled me. Okay. So, anyway, let's just get on with this. There we go. Got the camera. Got the control back for the, the thing. Seam off. Oh, God, that scared the bejesus out of me. No, no joke. Um, let's go back down here. I don't... Can we get in from down here? Okay. Mm, maybe? Maybe. I don't know. Um... We're doing okay. I'm just looking at power. This thing, we're at 44%. So, this is the part of the game that, um, or part, like, like this is, uh, it elicits certain emotions, right? Like, anxiety. <laughs> What's over there? I don't know, but, um, it could probably eat us. Whatever it is. And that's, that's what the headlight's on right here. <laughs> you can, <laughs> there's not very much else to see, is there? We're looking for a way in, um, in case that wasn't clear. 
Looking for a way in while staying alive, hopefully. Um, it's super dark over there. I, I don't know what's over there. I know on the, on the other end of the ship, it, it's bad. Like, the things that are over there are not things that I want to meet up close. So this looks like the bottom of the fuselage, right? Like, the this is... This is the bottom wall, so... I don't think we can go out and around and underneath this, or even if, like, if that's desirable. So we're trying to get inside of the spaceship. Yeah, so there's the sand. Nice and easy. Hopefully I can spot something before it spots me. I don't imagine that this would be as tense for someone watching this, like, watching this video as it is for me right now, but, um, it, it's pretty, it, it is pretty intense. I'm, I'm not, um, I don't exaggerate or try to, like, hype things up or make it what it's not, um, and, and I don't try to, <laughs> you know, like, um, exaggerate my emotions, but right now it's, um, it's pretty tense. What? Oh, God, what is that? Oh, okay, it's a fish. No big deal. Okay, so we are... Our depth limit? Oh, God. Okay. That was a freebie. Holy... <laughs> I don't like cussing in my channel, but if I were, that would be the time. If I were to. Okay, um... Shoot, I, I was I was saying something there and I totally forgot. Oh God, are you kidding me? Dude, what? Well, we know that's a no-go zone, so uh, <laughs> there's I don't think there's any point in going out there. Uh, those things will eat us alive, whatever those are. I don't know what they're called. Yes, I have seen them before in my other my other playthrough of this game, but um, no, not that closely, not that close up. I was talking about emotions, and yeah, like this, it's it's pretty intense playing this game. Um, that's one of the things I love about it is that it doesn't, it's not forcing like nothing jumps out at you. It's not like there to scare you. Those are, you know what I mean? Like it's not startle horror or whatever that's called. So there's the surface of the water you can see right there. There's some air up there. We got a new message. Lots of stuff going on. Warning. Ship's structural integrity is low. Fire suppression equipment and laser cutters may be required. Exploration is conducted at your own risk. Um, okay, that's a good that's a good sign, right? That she said that. We're gonna have to go back to base and get the fire or the the laser cutter, it sounds like, to cut open the door if we want to get in there. The, the, oh god, what, what is going on? <laughs> oh my god, this is so tense. Okay, um. I gotta call this one here. I, got, I gotta call it. Um, it's, it's about the length of my videos. This is super tense for me. I want to find the door and, um, and have like a point of entry, but... Man, it, that, yeah, okay, that's it. This is Subnautica. <laughs> you should play this game. This is my favorite game of all time, and I think this is an example of why. I hope, um... Yeah, I hope some of some of the emotion, like, was... Uh, some of my emotion was captured, although I doubt it. Just, like, discomfort in my voice and everything. But thanks for watching Atlas Gaming. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. I release content every day. We'll see you in the next one, where we have the door, the entry point. I'll probably just go look it up.